Слава Україні! Сьогодні, 20 Today, жовтня 2022 uh, року, 239 добу, український народ героїчно дає відсіч відступній російській наваді. Вітаю у Military Media Center, майданчику, де спільно комунікуються небезпеки та оборони України. Розпочинаємо наш щотижневий брифінг щодо оперативної обстановки на фронтах російсько-української війни та оперативної інформації, безпекової інформації на території України. З нами сьогодні заступниця міністра оборони України Ганна Маляр, заступник начальника, генерального, заступника, начальника головного оперативного управління Генерального штабу Збройних сил України Бригадний генерал Олексій Громов, тимчасово виконуючий обов'язки директора департаменту планування застосування головного управління Національної гвардії України полковник Микола Уршалович та начальник департаменту організаційно-аналітичного забезпечення та оперативного реагування Національної поліції генерал поліції третього рангу Олексій Сергеєв. Запрошую першою до слова заступницю міністра оборони пану Ганну Маляр. Welcome our first spokesperson, Hanna Maler. Good afternoon. We are starting our weekly briefing of the Defense and Security Forces. We are together on all front lines, including information on war. Our repulse to Russian armed aggression is going on for 34 weeks, and today we have the 239th day of repulse. Our defenders continue to repulse and liberate our territories from the occupied territories. The whole world see the overt attacks and missiles as well as UAV strikes on the Ukrainian cities. The Russian Federation also aims at civilian population and civilian infrastructure. Residential blocks in Kyiv, flower quarter and chestnut tree in Nikolaev. By this, Russian servicemen who encroach on our territory want to prove that the verdict has to be irreparable and understandable for everyone in the civilized world, that Russia is a territory state. During the previous week, the situation, situation around Ukraine remained difficult, however, still under control. The Russian Federation, the aggressor state, continues to inflict strikes on the critical and uh, other infrastructure of Ukraine, including residential blocks power infrastructure of Ukraine. Russian forces continue to perform their attacks on complete occupation of the Donetsk region and retention of occupied territories in Kherson, Zaporizhia and Nikolaev regions, as well as to disrupt their of our offensive uh, in these regions. The detailed information you will have from the representative of the general staff. According to our intelligence on the temporarily occupied territories of the Nesk Luhansk regions, the Russian propaganda intense has intensified activities aimed at aimed against Ukrainian forces and our forces. The Russian propaganda also aims at provision of supplies and qualitative care and assistance of medical workers of the Russian Federation. In this case, they want to pull our forces. Along with, we haven't fixed any supply of such equipment for the Russian forces. And these measures are aimed at propaganda nature. As for the mid-October this year, according to our intelligence, about 200,000 people have been called up. This is about 66% of the claimed number. According to our data, remaining of 107 and 22 
separate reg regiments is underway. It is performed in all military districts, not in fleet and airborne troops. Because of this and the abrupt tempo of mobilization, our enemy have, has problems with material, food and other means. They also face problems with the instructors to prepare their forces to combat actions. Thus, we have to know that the Russian forces are corrupted and destroyed. However, we face and perceive them in a serious way and we are ready to repulse. As for our traditional information, we also provide figures and other data as concerning the supplies of the Ministry of, Ministry of Defense for the armed forces. And this information concerns the previous week from 13 to 19th of October. For this week, more than 27,000 of armor vests, more than 23,000 of helmets and 37,000 footwear have been sent to the armed forces. As for the winter jackets, the logistical forces of the armed forces of Ukraine have registered more than 48,000 of winter jackets. 27,000 are being registered right now. More than 8,000 are coming to Ukraine and to the forces from the warehouses. And we also know that there are some problems with logistics and transportation. However, as for now, more than 150,000 of Western winter jackets are being sent and processed on different stages. In addition, the Ministry of Defense also sent 33,000 of winter hats, more than 70,000 of fleece jackets, more than 92,000 of winter and demi-season underwear, as well as other equipment. As for the armor vests and the helmets, the situation is the same. We have the same tempo and momentum of supplies and fulfillment of reserves. And as for now, uh, we have 210,000 of armor vests and 100,000 helmets as a reserve. In terms of winter uniform, the situation is under control and this information is open. The primary needs are fulfilled. It means that we have hundreds of thousands of winter uni uniform sets and we are aiming to provide the uniform to the low level units of the armed forces of Ukraine. We also focus on the payment. Uh, we also have some good news. And the uh, Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine adopted amendments to the state budget of the uh, for the year of 2022. And I want to know that the financial support of servicemen depends on the changes of the budget every quarter. And uh, as we stated before, the same amount of money has been paid uh, every month, what we planned uh, for the year. That is why that we have that the uh, Rada makes amendments to the budget. After signature of the law by the President of Ukraine, the government and the Minister of Defense of Ukraine will uh, work these questions out. I also warned that uh, last week that we would face some issues. However, we will work this out and our servicemen will not face uh, these uh, changes. 
and our servicemen will receive payments in full. We also are talking about uh, our victories on the judicial front line. And as now, as for now, we are dealing with uh, returning of illegally seized equipment from the armed forces of Ukraine. And we also are critical to every supplier and uh, service provider. And every day, every hour, uh, counts. It can negatively affect the defense capacity of Ukraine. Last week, the household court of the Lvivsk region voted in, fa in favor for the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine concerning the illegal seizure of equipment. The situation is sad, however, understandable there. And we always approach to courts. And when we are talking about the military campus in Lviv region, and when the private company rents this place, this place, it does not pay rent. And as for this criminal proce court procedure, uh, we have some results in our favor. The military unit in Lviv region that we are talking about has started the proceedings and working process uh, on this and the money will go and will be transferred uh, to the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. In addition, the Household Court of Dnipropetrovsk region voted in favor of 8.6 million hryvnia for the armed forces of Ukraine. Now we are talking about the violation of terms and volumes of oil, gas, and fuel supply for the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. The Ministry of Defense is constantly monitoring this situation uh, as well as um, fulfillment of obligations of courts. We also champion our interest. Thank you for your attention. We had a briefing of the Hanna Mayer, Deputy Minister of Defense of Ukraine, and we also heard the work done by the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. And now, please welcome Brigadier General Alexey Hromov, Deputy Head of the Main Operation Directorate of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine on the operational situation on all front lines of Ukraine. Good afternoon, everyone. As for October 20, the enemy continues to concentrate its efforts to retain, to retain seized regions of Donetsk, Kharkiv, the Parisian and Mykolaiv regions. The enemy continues to build up weapons, equipment, and concentrate its forces along the borders of Ukraine, as well as on the temporarily occupied territories. The situation on the front line, on the front line after the mobilization has been escalated. However, the enemy has no success. The mobilization only helps to increase the number of deaths. The enemy tries to intensify the usage of missiles and UAVs. The main targets are critical infrastructure installations. The, infra the armed forces of Ukraine continue to restore the ter territorial integrity of Ukraine. Our forces provide stability and security situation. The Volink, Zhitomir and Kyiv regions, the situation here is stab stabilized. The Belarusia tries to deploy the operational regional task force. The threat of ground advance in Chernihiv direction is getting higher. As for now, the axis of advance from Belarusia can be transferred to the 
western part of Ukraine to cut the supply lines. The aviation units deployment measure and other Russian forces continues in the territory of the Belarusian state. Within the, with what being sent, Belarusia authorities try to perform covered mobilization. At the same time, Belarusia gives its territory for, to Russia to engage UAVs, uh, to launch UAVs and missiles. We also respond to that. The General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine constantly is tracking the situation. As for now, we work on ensuring the secure and stabilized border protection from the north. In case of opening the second front, namely the advance of, uh, from Belarus, will be ready. In Chernihiv regions, the enemy is using disturbing fire against our units and other installations in Ukraine. In Sinkivka, we progress Haivka, Demchukova, Sunsivka, Khodene, Khotin, and Popivka of Sumer region. The enemy attacked by aviation the positions of our forces in the regions of Kyiv, Popivka, as well as against infrastructure in close proximity in Zhitomir, Proxivka of Sumer region. In Kharkiv direction, the enemy try to advance uh, in some installation, some settlements, however, it had no success. The enemy also engaged by missiles in the vicinity of Korotic and Minko. In Donetsk region, the claimed, the Russian claimed aim of the liberation of this territory will require lots of resources. In the vicinity of Solidar, Bakhmut and Opetna, Provomaiske, Krasnogorivka, Marinka, Novomikhailivka, the situation is critical. The enemy is trying to advance by assault actions and seize these installations, thus creating conditions for other forces. The enemy also used private military companies, which number increased by the former prisoners. In Kramatorsk direction, the enemy attacked by aviation in the vicinity of Bilohorivka, Torsk and Spirne. However, it had no success. In Bakhmir direction, the enemy remains difficult, however, controlled. The enemy continues to launch offensive actions in order to push back and dislodge our units from the occupied positions. In the vicinity of Spilne, Berestove, Bakhmutske Solidar, Bakhmut, Ivangrad, Atradivka, and Majorsk. The enemy also attacked by fire in the vicinity of Veimka, Konstantinivka, and Toretsky. In Avdiivka and Novopavlisk direction, the enemy performed offensive actions in order to dislodge our units. In the vicinity of Novokalenivka, Krasnohorivka, Pervomaiske, Vodene, Nevilsky, Marienka, Novomikhailivka, and Pavlivka. The enemy also attacked by aviation in the vicinity of Marienka, Nevilsky, Krasnohorivka, as well as on Novomikhailivka and Novoprochestivka. For the Putin's regime, the southern direction, Kherson, Zaporizhia, and Mikolaiv has a strategic purpose in order to create the future bridgehead to seize Odessa and Mykolaiv and deprive Ukraine of status of the CE state. In the Zaporizhia direction, the enemy actively defends and harasses the 
units of the armed forces of Ukraine. The enemy attacked by fire in the vicinity of Vremyuka, Olivska, Charivne, Malatakmachke, Shcherbaki, and missile strikes in the vicinity of Novostepnyavsky, Zaporizhia, and Dnipro. According to our data, the number one task for the Russian forces is to retain the front line and stop the Ukrainian advance in Kherson direction. The enemy plans to perform this task thanks to the first wave of mobilization and due to the increase of number of units on the right bank of Dnipro River. As for now, in Pidanobuch operational area, the enemy concentrated up to 45 BTGs. Each, they also expedite fortification equipment measures. They also, the enemy also tries to restore bridges and ferries uh, across the Dnipro River. Our forces also try to engage the ammunition depots, transportation lines, uh, lines of POL of the enemy. We also remain under control, under fire control, the supply lines of the enemy. Our forces also improve the tactical situation in some areas. In the Kulaya direction, the situation is stable and controlled. The enemy tries to engage our forces by artillery and they using the reserves in order to push back the armed forces. The enemy also acted offensively in uh, Novokamyoka region, however it had no success. The enemy continues missile and aviation strikes in Mikulav and Odessa regions. At the same time it engaged our position forces in Novokamen, Kazaminuha and other regions of Mikolayu Oblast, as well as Ochakiu in Odessa region. The, the enemy also engaged civilian infrastructure in the areas of Trehate and Humen. In general, the analysis of missile usage of the enemy fixes the increase of usage of these weapons. Since the last week, the enemy launched 154 missiles against Ukraine, and it sevenfold greater than the first uh, part of October. The main types of ammunition used by the enemy was the air-launched, air-based cruise missiles. The number of missiles used is 83 is greater than the number of these missiles used during the first four during the last four months almost a third 29 percent of the missiles engaged our forces were caliber sea-based missiles. The, man, the enemy also increased the number of ground-based missiles. It, it used eight missiles. Our aid, the, effecti the efficiency of our aid defense system is also under control. The use of kamikaze drones of the enemy also fixes the abrupt increase of usage of this use. 176 drones have been used by the enemy. As to compare as to compare to previous time, it increases these twofold, 2.5 times. As for the last week, the efficiency of our air defense has been intensified. During the last week, almost uh, 65. 65 drones have been targeted at infrastructure installations in KU regions. 
29 of them have been launched from the territory of Belarus. I warn you, please adhere and follow the safety rules, because even the missile engaged in flight, the, its fragments can kill. During the last week, the armed forces of Ukraine performed 180, 1,180 fire attacks. Our artillery operators have mastered and actively used the weapons and equipment provided by our by our partners. During the last 10 days, the artillery and missile units of Ukraine, due to the HIMARS and other MLRS units have engaged 130 ammunition depots, engaged 81 artillery units, and more than 1,200 1, concentration areas of the enemy. It should be noted that the armed forces of Ukraine use exclusively high precision missile and ammunition. It makes impossible the engagement of civilian installations. The armed forces continue to perform assigned tasks, and we have the forces and potential for that. Our air defense is working efficiently. Our pilots and other operators also work for their best. Our forces and airborne assault troops continue to perform their tasks in the armed uh, conflict. Representatives of all services work and fight side by side and we will work and fight for our victory. At the same time, I want to address to everyone who who tries to warn about the situation on the front line. I want to warn you that it's not worth posting and sharing on internet about the scales of engagement and other critical infrastructures engagement sites on the internet. You don't have to outwit and outthink our units in this. I want to say one more time that the ex exclusive right of this is vested on the general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine. If you don't want to help the enemy, please follow the informational hygiene rules. Thank you for attention. Thank you for thank you to Brigadier General Alexei Hromov for the operational information on the front line. And now, please welcome representative of the National Guard of Ukraine, Colonel Mikola Urshalovich. Good afternoon, everyone. The National Guard forces continue to perform combat and special tasks within the defense forces of Ukraine. During the last week, the main efforts of the National Guard units, along with the other units, aimed at participation of defensive operations within the Slobozhansk, Donetsk, Tavrysk and Basarabsk regions. Partici participation in stabilization operations within the Volyn, Polisa, Siversk and Slobozhanshina regions. Task performance for territorial defense in southern western operational zone. Stabilizing measures of martial law and other tasks by the National Guard and the law. The main efforts of our artillery aimed at fire support of the defense forces. 293 fire tasks have been performed to engage the manpower and material. Last week, according to reconnaissance information, National Guard artillerymen engaged by fire, a company of the enemy manpower and other equipment. On October 18, the motor battery 
uh, of one of the operational purpose units, performed fire task and engaged the enemy position. According to the enemy negotiation interception, the vehicle have been engaged. The aerial reconnaissance group, with the use of drone, has engaged the unit of the enemy up to a platoon and engaged a truck. In addition, I want to highlight the interdepartmental cooperation. Thus, the UAV group uh, of the National Guard and artillery unit engaged the armor equipment of the enemy. On October 13, in Orihivske direction, artillery unit of the armed forces of Ukraine engaged armored equipment of the enemy, detected during the aerial recon reconnaissance by the National Guard units. In total, the National Guard units detected 272 targets of the enemy. Special purpose, National Guard special purpose units uh, also performed their task in an efficient way. The special purpose unit of National Guard detected and destroyed the ammunition dump of the enemy. The National, National Guard uh, Aviation continues to perform tasks on fire suppression and engagement as well as medical evacuation uh, of wounded. The National Guard engineer units perform tasks on engineer and mine obstacles systems build up in the task areas. The demining teams perform tasks on mines clearing and protection of terrain on deliberated areas. 28 demining teams since February 24 have destroyed almost 18,000 explosive devices. The securing the martial law is performed and maintaining national law and order of the National Guard is performed in 19 units of Ukraine. Uh, namely, the work is done at 182 checkpoints. Last week, during the task performance, the National Guard apprehended 1,577 1, people. Three guns, three units of cold weapons, and almost 100 ammunition has been seized. The National Guard forces ensure secure uh, safety and defense of 302 important state installations and other critical infrastructure. During the massive airstrikes started on October 10th, the National Guard servicemen took part in relief measures and uh, performed tasks on the installations, production of which is vested at the National Guard of Ukraine. In addition, National Guard participates in repulse of the missile attacks. 250 as, uh, and 130 mobile fire teams have been created and we have some results in southern Buch operational area. The work is going on aimed at restoration of life support and uh, other measures in deliberated territories in Kharkiv and Kherson Oblast. National Guard units are engaged in stabilization measures on its territory. We also work with other forma formations and law enforcement bodies uh, in order to perform counter sabotage activities as well as search and rescue. We also aim our efforts at securing and uh, provision qualified medical assistance and treatment of our servicemen. We care that those who fight for Ukraine can have a better treatment. 
Thus, uh, recently 15 servicemen, uh, servicemen came back and returned from uh, medical care from abroad. Another 80, 80 military servicemen continue to be abroad. On this occasion, I want to thank to those partners who and countries who provide our servicemen perform rehabilitation and treatment. During the exchange of prisoners on October 17, eight National Guard servicewomen came back. National Guard Command also supports liberated military personnel and thanks and pro provides them with everything, everything necessary. Thank you for your attention. We had a briefing of the Colonel Mikola Ursulovich about the, its efforts of the National Guard. Thank you. And now I welcome Alexis Reheu, representative and head of the organization and analytical support and operational response department of the National Police. Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'll brief you on the measures taken by the National Police on the deoccupied territories of Kharkiv, Zaporizhia, and Kherson regions. After the liberation of the enemy held territories, the National Guard, National Police of Ukraine, along with State Emergency Service and National Guard units, restores its presence on this territory and takes stabilizing measures. Thus, in Kharkiv region, on the liberated territories, National Police took stabilization measures in 221 settlements. Ten police departments have resumed their work. Borova, Barvinkove, and other settlements. The detectives of the National Police of Ukraine have documented 1,774 war crimes, most of them for the 1,560 for violation of war crimes and customs, 185 for collaboration activity and 24, 24 for incro encroachment on the territorial integrity and inviolability of Ukraine. 572 dead bodies have been found on the deoccupied territories. On the deoccupied territories of, Har of Kharkiv region, our police representatives discovered 23 sites where Russians illegally held and tortured our citizens. The EOD national police personnel uh, performed 1,056 field entries where it detected territory of uh, area of 1,572 hectares. On the, the occupied territories of Donetsk region, the National Police performed stabilization measures in 43 settlements. One police department resumed its work. The National Police investigators and detectives f documented 16 war crimes. 181 dead civilian bodies have been found on the deoccupied territories, including five children's bodies. 151 have been identified. One place of illegal uh, health and torturing of citizens have been detected. The National Police EOD personnel performed two, two, 223 <coughs> travels and secure territory of an area of 101 hectares. 211 
persons have been detected. They have been identified and we also seized grenade launchers and guns from them. On the liberated territories of Kherson, the National Police performed stabilization measures and restore law in order in 88 elements. Two police departments have resumed their work. The National Police detectives have documented 156 war crimes, predominantly 139 for Article 438, 6 for Article 110, and 6 for Article 115. Nine bodies have been detected and three of them have been identified. Two places where Russians illegally held Ukrainian citizens have been discovered. The National Police EOD personnel performed 188 travels to the field and detected the territory of an area of about 142.4 hectares. In addition, our forces uh, and representatives started criminal proceedings. I want to give you an example that in Kherson region, the, uh, the citizen of Ukraine have been, has been exposed who, while stationing and being in the temporarily occupied territory, voluntarily took a post of a so-called Deputy Head of Kaval Council of Sharokine and, took part and participated in organizing and holding pseudo-referendum for inclusion of Kherson region to Russian Federation. In Donetsk region, the, the enemy has been exposed who, while being on the temporarily occupied territories, committed war crimes aimed at implementing educational standard, standards of the Russian uh, aggressor state. The police officers of Donetsk, Zaporizhia, Mykolaiv and, and Kharkiv continue to perform evacuation measures of civilians from the hostile areas. They also help civilians in location sites and accompany them to the safe regions. National Police also continues to law continues to perform law and order measures uh, on the liberated territories of Ukraine. Thank you for your attention. We had a briefing of the third rank police general Alexei Sergeyev. Now please welcome our representatives and we'll have your questions. We have a first question. Ukrainform. Irina Kozuhar, I have the question to Mr. Oleksii. The Surovikin announced the tough solutions and uh, this is, it aims at leaving the occupied uh, regions by Kherson. Do you mean, uh, do you believe that it will prepare the grounds for the further advance. And the second question, uh, what about the Anton, uh, Antoniusk bridge? Uh, do you plan to destroy, to destroy it? And if it's not a secret, do you know how many mobilized forces have been brought up to the Ukrainian borders? Thank you. Thank you for the question. As for the Kherson direction, the armed forces of Ukraine 
did, do and will do everything possible and impossible to liberate our territories. No matter decisions are taken of the Russian aggressor, we are continue to perform our tasks. They have their own plans and we have our own task to liberate our territory. As for the enemy task force, they can retreat to the left bank. We do not exclude it. However, you understand that they will retreat in not a full strength. As for the Antonio Bridge, the enemy does uh, rebuild the Ponton Bridge close to Antoniusk Bridge and tries to use it. We have reconnaissance data that, in, as in other directions, the enemy tries to flood the fire bridges at night so as not to uh, give information for our artillery. However, our artillery helps them to flood these uh, fire bridges. The enemy cannot use Antonius Bridge. Uh, I want to in, to highlight that they use ferry bridges. As for their forces retreat, we consider one of the actions that the enemy can retreat and leave the mobilized forces to deter the retreat and project professional personnel to the left bank of, of Dnipro. However, the, we understand the mobilized Russian forces cannot resist our forces. There are many courses of actions and we will work on that. We will, have, we will win. And as for the troops along the borders, uh, we have information, however, we cannot believe that, that, that the Russian forces will try to mobilize 300,000 of personnel. We know that our enemy is tricky and this number is just for general use according to uh, different data. As for now, the enemy mobilized more than 200,000 personnel. This is as for now. We do, there are units uh, who are stationed on the territory of Russian Federation and there are also units who try to approach the regions and borders of Ukraine and Belarus. We are tracking this situation and I want to emphasize that those units who are who came at the border territory of the Russian aggression aggressor state they are not trained and do not have a proper level of training. We understand that we understand that they will carry out inner action and inner cause tasks. Thank you. Army inform. Question to the Deputy Minister. According to our information, the Russian Federation spreads letters and other information that Ukrainian special services uh, perform special uh, actions on the territory of the Russian territory. What's your opinion on that? The Ukrainian units, the armed forces of Ukraine, act and perform tasks exclusively on the territory of Ukraine. However, the Russian propaganda has to prepare the grounds to justify its losses. And in fact, they are trying to discredit the discredit Ukraine on the international level. So they cover Ukraine as uh, not as an unreliable partner in order to deprive Ukraine of opportunity to receive weapons from abroad. The next question. Tatiana Moroz, Armia Inform. 
A question to Alexey Gromov. Can you give a comment on the situation with Belarus? They deployed in troops. What do you think? Uh, is it a psychological operation or the threat does exist? Thank you for this question. Uh, uh, when we win and when we have peace, I'll take my uniform off and give you my personal opinion. However, now I can provide you with uh, thoughts and information as a representative of the, national, of the general staff. According to our information, the task force build up, we consider it as demonstration actions. Last month, we saw the rotation and movement of some of their forces. For a certain period of time, it can be as a demonstration. However, the threat for the advance of the territory of Belarus exists. The uh, question is to Alexey Gromov. What, what influence the martial law of the temporary occupied territory on the temporary occupied territories of Ukraine can have on the course of war? However, uh, at first I want to say that this is illegal, as it is illegal uh, to seize our territories. I think it can be a impetus to force uh, more action from the Federal Security Service of the Russian Federation. For the most part, it will relate to, to maintain law and constitutional order on the temporarily occupied territories. They will also try to counter to counter uh, information being get by our forces by every means. Thank you. Question is to Hanna Maler. How it is planned to intensify protection of the critical infrastructure installation? Uh, if you are tracking the news, the our state regularly warns on the warns about the engagement of civil infrastructure and everyone knows and sees that we are ready for such missile and air attacks and that is why we try more or less uh, we manage to to restore the infrastructure. However, we are forced to recognize that the damage is critical and uh, the enemy's task is to deprive the Ukrainian force of uh, light and resources. The question is to uh, Mr. Sergeyev. What exactly explosive devices do you see and what is the number of these uh, devices? As for the kinds of uh, weapons and devices seized by our forces and EOD personnel, I can name that in Kharkiv region where we detected the most number of uh, devices, the first is the most uh, dangerous is mine explosive devices which is uh, overtly and currently installed by the enemy to destroy our manpower, citizens or uh, material, namely anti-tank, anti-personnel, uh, mines, trip wires. The Kharkiv region is characterized by booby traps, booby traps as well as improvised explosive uh, device, for example, the separate trap and others. This is the first kind of uh, explosive devices. The second type is uh, cluster artillery and aviation uh, munitions, which are which numbers are thousands on the temporarily occupied territories. 
the part of dissemination, uh, namely the first kind, is uh, moved to the safety areas and then being destroyed. The large number of ammunition which are not uh, damaged are sent to the use of, by the armed forces of Ukraine. And there are also lots of facts where lots of weapons are located in one area and uh, disposal and removal of such uh, areas will take months. That is why we make a decision to secure this area so we can have more time to work this out. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? The question is to Mikola Urshalovich. How will the plant uh, lights shut down affect the operational areas and will the number of uh, National Guard uh, on the streets will increase? I think the lights shut, lights shut down will not affect the performance of the National Guard. I hope I gave you an answer to your question. Thank you. Please, another question. And the question is to Hanna Maler. Did the mood uh, of the Russian population change since the beginning of the mobilization? We regularly inform on the data received, and I want to say that the Russian society did less and less support the armed aggression of the Russian aggression in Ukraine. And this is for the most part is related to the fear of death because they see what uh, happens here. However, we don't have to make illusions and also underestimate the enemy because we have a serious enemy. And as you can see, this mood uh, does not uh, stop uh, the Russian Federation. That is why we have to go and work till the end and liberate our territories. Please, another question. This is Suspilna. Thank you for your work. And I have a question to uh, Mr. Alexei Hromov. Uh, you mentioned the statistics of the drones uh, flying to KU to engage an in infrastructure. Uh, recently the anti-drone dome will be installed in KU and does it work right now and is it installed here and is it effective? We can understand that there are some uh, fiction movies uh, where there is a solid dome which prohibits the enemy to attack. As for now, I can say that as, as it's a dome, our forces work effectively and air defense operators uh, operate effectively who by its heroic actions down the drones, cruise missiles and try to uh, provide peace uh, for our citizens. However, everything is uh, still underway and I hope that we'll have this anti-drone dome. I want to say that we received lots of uh, equipment from the partner states, namely including the air defense assets. We use these assets right now and we have some results, good results. Thank you. If we have no questions, thank you to our speakers. This is Military Media Center, the source of reliable information in the defense and security sector. Thank you.